This is the beginning of part three of our module, Managing Interest Rate Exposure, which teaches you how to use simple interest rate swaps and options to manage interest rate exposures arising in the ordinary course of business. We remind you that this part three contains chapters five and six of the module, with chapter five pushing the level of product sophistication a little further than in the preceding chapters and chapter 6 containing the quiz. This chapter 5 describes and analyzes strategies that incorporate more complex combinations of swaps, options and swaptions as well as strategies based on LIBOR in arrears. LIBOR in arrear swaps, hereafter LIA swaps, were introduced in our module on interest rate forwards and swaps, but a basic refresher is provided here before advancing to more sophisticated applications. The mechanics of LIA swaps in their simplest form are exactly the same as those of regular interest rate swaps, including with regard to maturity, settlement dates, frequency, and so on, except that the calculation or fixing of LIBOR for each period is based on the LIBOR that resets two days before the end of that period as opposed to two days before its beginning under a regular IRS. A peculiar consequence of the LIA fixing method, therefore, is that the party paying LIA does not know what he pays for any period until two days before the end of that period. When dealing with an upward sloping LIBOR spot and forward curve, the use of the later LIBOR fixing for each period will drive upward the rate on the swap's fixed leg, since this will be calculated approximately as the time-weighted average of the LIBOR fixings over the life of the instrument. Coming now to the key point for our present purposes, we observe that when the curve is upward sloping by any significant amount, a counterparty willing to pay LIA instead of regular LIBOR under a swap with otherwise normal terms would therefore be entitled to an upfront premium, which we will somewhat imprecisely label a premium throughout this chapter, equal to the aggregate PV of the differences over the life of the instrument of the in arrears and in advance fixing of LIBOR for each interest period until maturity. Or stated another way, a party that enters into a basis swap under which he pays LIA while receiving regular LIBOR in advance would be entitled to an upfront premium equal to this difference, assuming all other features of the swap are standard. This premium, rather than being paid up front, is used in a number of sophisticated hedging structures to improve the cosmetics and arguably also the true economics of these strategies. We illustrate the above via this worksheet, LIBOR in arrears in which we first calculate the premium that the counterparty would earn if they agreed to pay LIBOR in arrears instead of the normal LIBOR 
under an otherwise standard interest rate swap. In the table starting on column B, which is otherwise identical to the one in worksheet grid, we have inserted a new column, column I, labeled present value of floating in arrears, in which we calculate the PV of the floating payments under the LIA swap based on the in arrears fixing of LIBOR instead of the more usual LIBOR fixing in advance. You should be able to confirm that the forward LIBOR that is used in the formulas in this column is the one that resets at the end of the interest period rather than at the beginning in contrast to the formulas in column H. Over on the right cells Q12 to U12 contain swap rates for different maturities assuming a LIBOR in arrears fixing for the floating leg based on the usual formula used to derive swap rates but adjusted for the arrears fixing and right underneath these cells on row 13 we reproduce the rates for the regular IRS instruments readily confirming in each case a lower fixed leg of some 10 basis points annually under the regular swap versus the LIBOR in arrears swap. Cells P14 to U14 finally reveal the upfront premium in basis points for each maturity that a counterparty would earn if it agreed to pay LIBOR in arrears instead of regular LIBOR on an otherwise normal IRS based on the same formula that was used in worksheet annualized premium. In particular, we observe that switching from LIBOR in advance to LIBOR in arrears on a five-year IRS generates an upfront premium of 43 basis points for the party paying floating. There are a number of ways our borrower under the five-year LIBOR plus 1% loan can make use of this premium instead of collecting it in cash up front. First, he can enter into a LIBOR, LIBOR in arrears basis swap and use the premium to which he becomes entitled to purchase a cap on the LIA that the borrower is required to pay under the basis swap. The borrower, of course, receives three-month LIBOR fixed in advance from the bank under the swap, which matches the three-month LIBOR the borrower pays under the th five-year loan. We now illustrate all this on our flow chart. Here is the LIBOR, LIBOR in arrears basis swap on the left. Here is the upfront premium it generates. Here is the purchase of the LIA cap whose unknown strike for now we simply label K percent. Here blinking is the arrow indicating the receipt by the borrower of LIBOR in advance 
and here is the matching payment by the borrower of LIBOR in advance under the loan. We cannot price this cap using worksheet GRID since the underlying index in that worksheet is the regular LIBOR in advance. We need to amend the formulas for our caplets and floorlets to reflect the use of LIBOR in arrears as the correct underlying index. This has already been done in worksheet LIBOR in arrears in which we have programmed in column J the same black formula as before but with a single change that the discount factor incorporated into the formula reflects one fewer period of discounting. Cap and floor prices are then derived over here in columns starting in column Q and going on to column AB as simply the sum of the relevant individual caplets and floorlets exactly as before. We observe next that a five-year cap on three-month LIBOR in arrears struck at 8.73 percent costs exactly 43 basis points up front. Removing unnecessary arrows, we can therefore offer our borrower a hedging strategy referred to sometimes as a basis swap plus zero premium cap with LIA or more usually simply as zero premium cap with LIA for short under which the bank as you can see here pays LIBOR fixed in advance under the swap which is passed on to the lender while the borrower pays LIBOR in arrears but now capped at 8.73 percent. Worksheet cap with LIA appearing now in front of you contains the usual table and graph describing the profile of this strategy. We will spend little time on this worksheet since it essentially duplicates our previous worksheets on cap structures but with the sole difference of using the LIBOR rate set in arrears. To some borrowers the strike of 8.73 percent may seem too remote and therefore unattractive. In such cases, one option is to propose to the borrower that he use the 43 basis points of upfront premium to subsidize a color structure instead of a simple cap, thereby bringing down the strike of the cap component. Returning to worksheet LIBOR in arrears, we observe that our old 5% five-year floor used in chapter 3 in our construction of the zero premium color to generate for the borrower an upfront premium of 64 basis points now earns the borrower 68 basis points when its underlying has been modified from regular LIBOR to LIBOR in arrears. This increase may initially surprise you since the use of the in arrears fixing 
with an upward sloping curve shape has lifted the expected value of the LIBOR fixings, which should have reduced the value of the LIA floor. This is certainly true, but the second effect of using LIBOR in arrears instead of regular LIBOR with caps and floors is that the fixings happen on average one period later than before for each embedded caplet or floorlet. So really each embedded caplet or floorlet has a tenor longer than before by one quarter. In our present example, the impact of the longer tenor has visibly outweighed the impact of the higher expected fixings, so the LIBOR in arrears floor has become more expensive than the regular floor. Recalling now that the borrower earned 43 basis points up front under the LIA swap, appearing here on the left, and adding this 43 basis points to the 68 basis points earned by selling the 5% LIA floor allows us to provide the borrower now with a 5-year LIA cap combined with the floor into a collar but struck at the much improved level of 7.3% instead of 8.73% previously, for which cap the upfront premium is revealed in our worksheet to be 111 basis points up front, i.e. exactly equal to the sum of the 43 and the 68. And as mentioned previously in our discussion of colors in Chapter 2, the upfront premium for the LIA basis swap appearing here on the left can be used in any number of other combinations to structure colors with different strikes or alternatively in combination with any of the other strategies we discussed in previous chapters including seagulls, leverage strategies and so on. This new worksheet Zero premium color with LIA reveals the usual table and graph describing the profile of our latest LIA color structure. For comparison purposes, we have added into the graph the regular IRS and the zero premium color previously discussed in Chapter 3. We emphasize again that the LIBOR rate under this structure, of course, is set in arrears. We turn next to a strategy often referred to a little disingenuously as a subsidized swap, especially suitable for borrowers that can tolerate a certain flexibility on the fixed to floating ratio of their aggregate debt, but centered around some predefined long-term average, generally determined by a variety of factors, including the industry sector, credit rating, and so on. These types of borrowers are attracted to the subsidized swap because it enables them to pay a reduced fixed rate in return for risking only that if LIBOR rises above a predefined level on any reset date, they will revert to paying floating for that period under the swap, but even then at a negative spread to prevailing LIBOR. A subsidized swap is structured by combining a regular swap under which the borrower pays fixed and receives LIBOR with a short cap whose premium is not collected up front 
but rather is spread over the life of the swap, hence the subsidy element. Worksheet PV01, in which a number of rows have been hidden, calculates the PV01 of our original five-year interest rate swap, which is defined here simply to mean the present value in basis points of a one basis point increase in the swap rate from the perspective of the party receiving the fixed rate. The answer revealed in cell C27 is 4.33 basis points. We will assume in this discussion that this DV01 applies in a linear fashion to further shifts in the swap rate by any further aggregate amount in basis points, although the more astute of our listeners will scoff at our apparent ignorance of the effects of convexity that would, over large enough movements, introduce quite an error into our calculations. In the table immediately to the right, we convert in column H the upfront premiums for sold caps imported from worksheet grid into their annual equivalents over the swap's five-year life, enabling us to determine the amount of swap subsidy that could be obtained by the borrower from selling these various caps. For example, selling a 7.5% cap earns 82 basis points up front, which becomes an annualized 19 when it is divided by 4.33, which in turn leads to a reduction of the fixed leg under the subsidized swap from 590% to 5.71%. To gain additional insights into the subsidized swap, we take the example of a borrower paying LIBOR plus 1% on a 5-year loan who sells a 7% 5-year cap and also enters a 5-year regular swap into which he intends to incorporate the premium from the short cap in the fixed leg. Ignoring for now this premium, the above leaves the borrower owing LIBOR plus 1% under the loan, short the cap, and paying 5.9% under the regular IRS. The annualized premium for the short cap is revealed in worksheet PV01 to be 27 basis points. The various possible outcomes on each settlement date under the strategy are summarized in this table. The table reveals a floor on the borrower's net interest expense, now turning red in the bottom left cell, of 6.63% meaningfully lower than the 6.9% available via a regular IRS. And when LIBOR resets above 7%, the borrower's net interest expense in the column on the right becomes all in LIBOR minus 37 basis points, now turning red in the bottom right cell 
not exactly a bad outcome compared to the LIBOR plus 1% paid by the borrower if he remains unhedged. These various outcomes are plotted on this worksheet subsidized swap for two alternative strategies. The first one involving a short 7% cap. The second one a short 6% cap. Once again alongside the unhedged profile and the profile under a regular interest rate swap. The graph illustrates clearly the trade-off between the higher swap subsidy available by shorting the 6% cap versus the diminished negative spread when the switch to floating rate occurs. In the left portion of the graph we observe that under either of the subsidized swap alternatives in blue and in orange, the borrower's net interest expenses show an improvement versus in black the normal IRS when rates are low. While the right portion of the graph reveals that the subsidized swaps again shown in orange and blue, outperform the unhedged profile when rates are high. This is typically how this product is marketed by the more aggressive salespersons, using this variant of the win-win approach. Our ethical and pedagogical responsibility towards our listeners requires us to point out also that for the same reasons, subsidized swaps on the left, when rates are low, underperform the unhedged profile in the diagonal, and also subsidized swaps over on the right underperform the regular IRS hedge when rates are high. Nonetheless, the cosmetics of an instrument that leaves the borrower at LIBOR minus 37 basis points when rates are high and that swaps minus 27 basis points when rates are more moderate does have a cosmetic appeal that cannot be denied. The final application discussed in this chapter centers around cancelable swaps whose structure and pricing were examined in detail in our module Callable Bonds and Swaptions. As a reminder, we explained in that module that a five-year IRS in which the borrower pays fixed and receives LIBOR and that may be cancelled by the bank on its second anniversary, say, is equivalent to a regular five-year pay fixed swap combined with a short 2 by 3 European payer swaption causing the fixed leg of the cancellable swap to lie below that of the regular swap. We also remind you that the cancellation feature may be European or Bermudan. So cancellation may be chosen on one specified date only if European versus on a number of specified dates if Bermudan. If Bermudan the remaining tenor of the swap on the cancellation date is not known up front since it will depend on the chosen date of cancellation. This worksheet, Cancelable Swap, 
is lifted from module callable bonds and swaptions and is used here to price a European cancelable swap. You should review that module for further details and explanations. To calculate the fixed rate under a five-year pay fixed swap cancelable in one year, we enter the number one in M7 and four in cell M8, then we goal seek cell M18 to value zero by changing the strike in M5, revealing a rate under the cancelable of just around 5.02%. A five-year swap cancelable in two years can be similarly priced by entering 2 in cell M7 and 3 in cell M8. Then gold seeking as before cell M18 to the value 0 by changing as before the strike in M5 revealing this time a rate under the cancelable of just under 5.2%. Over a little on the right, columns X and Y reveal the rate under the fixed leg for each of the four possible alternative dates of exercise of the cancellation right. You will note that the fixed rate is lower the shorter the time until the cancellation option expires. Over on the right even further, the table and then the graph, as always, illustrate the various outcomes for the five-year swap cancelable in one year and for the five-year swap cancelable in two years. The graphs confirm our preceding observations. This concludes this chapter 5 and brings us to the quiz.